So this morning it's time to say goodbye to Lee. So goodbye. So nice. It's been a pleasure. So nice to travel <laughs> with you a bit. Like well, a good time. Crossed suspension bridges. Oh yeah. <laughs> cliff sides. Other things. Maybe some other time in China or Scotland or Germany, who knows? Yeah, maybe I'll see we'll you see. again. So he's Hopefully. gone gonna go back to Karimabad, which is the opposite direction of me. Because I am going now to Soest, which is in this direction. And this is basically the last Pakistani town before the Chinese border and before the big Kunjara Pass road there. And there's basically nothing there to do, so yeah. Have fun. Good luck crossing since, the border. Since he's not going to China, he decided to go back to Karimabad. And good luck in China. I need that. Thank you. Next you shouldn't tune in. Yeah. There he goes. Oh, okay. Now I'm on my own again. Good luck, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. So there's like one car coming every five minutes. And yeah, this part of the Karakurum Highway isn't used that much. And I wonder why they don't use it for trade, but yeah, I'm just gonna wait and I have time today. It's only like 40 kilometers in this direction. And yeah, then I will chill there for today. And tomorrow I will try to go to China. So yeah, I'm really excited about all of that. Yes, I got picked up by one of these beautiful trucks and I met Ashir. 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 Mohammed Ashir. Ashir. And thank you so much, he's taking me to Soest. <laughs> Shukriya. I arrived in Soest. This is the truck that brought me here. Also extremely beautiful. I will definitely miss those in China. And yeah, this is how it looks like. It's a, for the location, a pretty big town because yeah, it's like the border town between China and Pakistan. So the way this works is that at the end of this town, where the street to China goes, you have to do immigration and customs and the actual border between Pakistan and China is like another 100 kilometers away. So, and then there's like the border checkpoint and they search you and stuff. And then another like 150 kilometers and there's like the actual immigration of China and like the first town of China. So, in between is just the Kundra Pass. And yeah, this is a pretty crazy border, I think. But yeah, now I'm really hungry and I'm gonna go for food first. So I found a nice hotel room for six dollars and yeah, just look at the view here, it's amazing the place. And now I'm gonna go and explore a little bit more of Soest. This town is pretty chill, there's not much going on, like basically I think no one going to China, no one coming. Which is pretty crazy, you know, because the Karakurum Highway is built for the trade and, but it seems like it's not fast enough yet because of all the landslides and the destroyed parts of the, of the highway. And yeah, I think shipping, is, shipping by sea is still the faster route, but maybe in the future it will become an important trade route, who knows. Also, while building the Karakurum Highway, which took like 40 years, hundreds of Chinese workers and hundreds of Pakistani workers died on that project. So I think it's important to remember the losses both countries had to take in order to create 
this amazing road. You know, this road leads through so unforgiving terrain and so rough mountains. And I mean, the landslides are just one part of it. What is this? And all the and all these um, mountainous regions, they continue for a long time in China. So right now I'm basically in the middle of it and there's a long part of mountains and another long part of the Karakorum Highway, of course, on the Chinese side. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty insane road. And I mean, the sights on the side of the road make it so worth to travel by this road and not to fly to fly into China and yeah I'm really excited about going to China but for, from what I heard and what Lee told me who lived two years in China is that it's gonna be extremely tough for hitchhiking and you know it's quite the opposite the Pakistani people are so friendly and hospitable and open and the Chinese people are I don't want to say they are not hospitable because I'm sure they are also in some villages maybe hospitable but many of the Chinese, of the modern Chinese people, they are all about making money and not about giving free lifts. So I think hitchhiking is going to be really tough there. And also the Chinese people are more like, not that open-minded like Pakistani people. They won't be like screaming at me, hello, and like wanting to talk with me. They will be like, I don't know, more like shy and more like looking at me but not saying anything. And yeah, that will and also the language barrier, like Pakistani people all speak almost very, yeah, like really good English and Chinese people really struggle with English and basically no one speaks English and then the language, like the letters are different and yeah, just such a different culture. It's gonna be quite a shock. But now I'm facing a completely different problem. The way this border works is Right now, this is the last town of Pakistan, which is called Sost. And at the end of this town, there is the immigration. So from there, I will get my exit stamp from Pakistan. And then there's another like 150 kilometers until the actual border between Pakistan and China. And there's like a checkpoint of both parties with like police and military. And then there you get like basically searched and stuff and maybe interviewed and all of that because yeah that's how it works and then another 150 kilometers and then there's finally the first town of China and then in that town of China you will get the immigration stamp to China and I'd also talked with a lot of people here now and the police and they all say it's not allowed to hitchhike here and normally you know if someone says it's not possible or it's not allowed I tried anyways because most of the time it is. If someone tells you it's not possible in Pakistan, most of the time it is possible. But in this case, I think it really isn't possible because first of all, no one I think is willing to take me to China. And second of all, almost I think actually no one is going there. The people said no one is going there. There are only some buses going there and these buses if I book a bus here in Pakistan, the bus is actually going like 150 kilometers into China to the first town and there the bus has to drive all the way back. So that's pretty crazy, but I think at this point I have pretty much no option but to take the bus. And yeah, this is, as you know, for me, with my plan of trying to hitchhike around the globe, a big problem for me. You know, if the actual border would be on the mountain pass that are between the countries and I could just hitchhike to the Pakistan border and then get the stamp there, walk across to the Chinese side, get the stamp there and then try to hitch another ride, maybe, I don't know, maybe even riding back with the policeman to the next town if there's no other car going, then it would be possible. But the fact that you get the stamp here in, in, the, in this town and then there's 300 kilometers in between where is it like a really weird zone and also you know a strict zone where you shouldn't really do anything strange because you know I'm strange enough like a t as a tourist here and yeah so I think it's pretty much impossible to hitchhike and I have to think of any kind of solution I'm, I don't know I'm still thinking about it
also it's kind of crazy that I'm here right now like right before the Chinese border I mean I hitchhiked from Turkey over Iran over Pakistan and now I'm about to enter China the fourth country how crazy is that I mean for me this journey is already a success I know I have like such a big distance ahead of me and such a big challenge still but I'm so happy to be here and oh, nice, man. yeah <laughs> what's up guys nice to meet you I have to take a video nice nice where are you from Germany Germany yeah I mean it's already such a long distance and so many people told me it's not even possible to get that far you know but it's it's possible and if you just try hard enough I guess but China is going to be an extreme challenge for me and not only because of the different people and different mentality and not, you know, I got basically spoiled of the Turkish, the Iranian and the Pakistani hospitality and now I enter China, which is, you know, quite different and I want to cross China and in order to make it to Laos only by hitchhiking which is an insane distance because I have to make it around Tibet which makes the journey about 6,000 kilometers and I only have a 30-day visa for China so that means I have to go per day at least 200 kilometers which is crazy considering that in China hitchhiking will be difficult people told me it's even not possible I don't believe it but you know it's definitely gonna be way more difficult than Pakistan and all the big cities like the crazy cities I have to walk through like kilometers and kilometers just so many big cities in China and imagine if I get sick like a couple of days then I have to do even more kilometers per day and yeah I don't I really 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 hope I make it in that time to Laos because yeah otherwise it will be really bad